Avion Tour stretches to all corners of Europe. Last week it was Tenerife, this week it's to the southwest corner of Ireland and Kerry in the Killarney Golf and Fishing Club. A place of outstanding natural beauty, it's one of the most breathtaking venues for the Ladies European Tour. 25,000 acres of national park. Ross Castle was laid siege by the Cromwellian army in 1652. Bet you didn't know that. Queen Victoria was reputed to have stayed at Muckross House in 1861. But in the last few years, Killarney has become one of the major European golfing destinations. To see players of this calibre on a magnificent course like this, which will be seen by potential visitors throughout the world. It's really confirming Ireland's position now as one of the premier golfing destinations of the world. It really is a spectacular part of the world, Dan. You were there for the first time. You must have really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was absolutely breathtaking. Um, first time I've ever been to this part of Ireland. I've played in Dublin a few times before, but it really was beautiful. The views over the mountains around the golf course, and, uh, and as you can see, the weather was fantastic too. Did the weather hold out all week? Uh, unfortunately, no. Ah. You always take your chance in Ireland. You're never, never quite sure what the weather's going to do, but it is a gorgeous place to visit and the people are so friendly. Raquel Carriedo back to defend 71-75 for the 30-year-old Spaniard. Not what she would have wanted, certainly not ideal, but not miles out of it. Not such a good week last week in Tenerife for Suzanne Pettersen. 71-71, rounds one and two, and nicely placed. And a very confident young lady and a golfer with much talent. Feeling that great. She's had flu, but she's battling through it. I uh, played okay. Um, it's a fun course to play, and uh, there are a lot of birdie opportunities. But the greens are difficult, so I'm I'm in a good position, and I feel comfortable. So yeah. Seventeen tournament winner Trish Johnson. Just coming back to some form after being injured for a lot of last year. And she's desperately keen to do well this week. And desperately keen for Arsenal to do well. Flew all the way across to Old Trafford to see Arsenal beat United. I grudgingly say. I, I usually play quite well in Ireland. I enjoy playing here. Um, and I enjoy the courses that we play. So I don't know about if I'm thinking about winning. It's just nice to be, you know, trying to get my swing back in, in place and uh, enjoying it, really. Marie Monet. She's very young, she's French, she's doing well in the order of merit. And she's putting very well this week. And looking very calm on the course, looking for her first victory. There's so many of the girls out. Testing par putt. Swept all aside so far and it just gets in. 72-69, three under par, tied with this lady from Denmark, Eben Tinning. She's trying to win her first event out here on the Evian Tour and be the first Dane to win. It could happen. She's been rock solid. 71-70, no mistakes. Yeah. And she's tied going into the last round. I'm quite pleased, yeah. I wish I potted a little bit better, but um, I'm practicing on it, so maybe it's going to be tomorrow. Going into the last round then, Tinning and Monet both on three under par. One shot further back, Johnson and Pettersen, they're two under, and then three people on level par. It's very close, it's anyone's game. Who's going to have the nerve? One round to go. Of course, everybody looking for Solheim Cup points this week. Raquel Carriedo is leading that at the moment. Annika Sorenstam, we're sure she'll play her way in. Out of the course. Very blustery and cool conditions. Stephanie Arico. She joined the tour in 2000. Holding a nice putt there for Birdie. She had a terrible year last year, so uh, she'll be looking to improve on that this year. Chris Johnson right in the middle of the fairway at the first. Second shot. 
would love to get off to a very quick start. Trish, the most experienced player at the top of the leaderboard, but uh, there's a lot of talent up there, so she's going to have to play well today, finish at the top. Marine Monet also found the fairway. 387 yards this first hole. A bit of wind across. It's a tough starting hole, actually. Oh, it is. It's playing. Wind's playing across and into you, so you should be hitting a five or a four iron in here. Just depends on the light. And it's okay, but she's going to come across the green, down a tier to where the hole's cut. It's certainly a difficult up and down, and it wouldn't be what she would have wanted for herself on the very first hole. Karen Dibner, putting for par on the second. Mm, she started with a bogey on the first as well, so not really the start she was looking for. Bogey, bogey start to go to plus two. Even Tinning, her second to the first. A strong player. Good swing too, nice line to it. And just hangs on, not quite. Could be an awkward putt that, right up against the, the cut of fringe. Way right across that tier again. That's a characteristic of this course, is that there are a lot of undulations on the greens, very difficult to read. Gina Scott, putting for birdie in the second. Nicely hold. Good start for her. She came close to winning last year in Holland, but had a bit of a disaster on the final hole. So sort of narrowly missing out there. Tough pitch from Monet. Eight. She's done the up and under route. And has played that beautifully. Very much tilted away past the flag. It's still dribbled away some Eight to ten feet or so. Ibn playing her third shot, just up against the collar of the rough there. Not so easy to play the shot. Leaves herself a difficult ten footer for par. Suzanne Peterson bogeyed the first, par the second, and she's in trouble here at three. This is for par. Quiet, so that's two bogeys in three holes. Disastrous start for the Norwegian. Mum on the bag, she'll be going mad. Back to level par. Johnson's third shot at the first hole, choosing to putt just from the front edge here. A very wise choice. Is that you, Diane? Are you, are you a Texas wedger, or you, do you like to get the, you know, a, just a foot of fringe and you'll be chipping? Not keen on the chipping. I like to keep the ball close to the ground as soon as possible. Sort of an anti-duff method? Y yes, something like that. A real mixed bag for Gina Scott. Part the first, birdie at second, bogey at the third, and this 30-footer for another birdie at four, down the hill. Oh, it's in! Well done! Into red figures, minus one. Certainly right in contention. Gibbons par putt at the first hole. It's proving quite difficult this first hole for a few of the players. Another disappointing start. Well, Trish Johnson's playing with two girls who haven't won before, and she's won 17 times. That, that's got to give her a bit of an advantage. Bet these young players, they're hungry. And good. And this is for par. And that's yeah. a B. So she drops a shot at the very first hole, slides from three under back to two under. And just needs to settle down. There are bound to be nerves in the final round. But it's still tied after one hole. 
Tinning, Monet and Johnson. 200 apiece. Johnson making a par, but she started one shot behind. Johnson did par the second. This is a tee shot at three. Now this is a really short par four, 267. And she, I would imagine, is driving... Left. Looking that way, water. She was going for the green there, so uh, that's not uh, too good. A little bit down breeze and taking the ball by the horns, but she could get bitten here on number three. About seven, I'd say. Ronald Devon. Tiger. Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Can't read. What? Um, you two. Both. Zimbabwe. <laughs> That's a leading question. Gin and tonic. Ty. I have got one, but there's no way I'm telling you. Not a chance. She's been a very consistent player of the years. 95 to 2000, never finished outside the top 10 in the order of merit. But coming back after injury, Diane, that's never easy. No, she's really been struggling over the last few years. Different problems, her back, her shoulder, her wrist. Um, she d really didn't play very much at all last year. I missed a lot of tournaments in the States. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's not looking good, is it? Uh, she might save power. Might still get away with it, the third. 24-year-old Swede, Maria Baudin. This is for birdie at nine. She's just gone five, six, and six and seven. Hole in one at eight. Rattles that in for birdie at nine. She goes to one under. And everything is beautiful. Quite a few of the girls on the third hole are, are, are going for the green today because the wind has changed direction completely, so it's playing down breeze. It's protected by water, but it's not stopping the girls from taking the driver out. Did you ever go at it? I didn't, actually. Um, I'm, you know, your average little hitter, so I didn't think I'd quite carry the water. And made a... 30. Well done. Sensible play. Marie Monet trying to make amends for a shaky start. Two fives, one of those being apart. And that's a beauty. And that will be a birdie. And she'll move back to minus three, back into the lead. Stephanie Arico for birdie on seven. She can hold this, it'll take her back to level par and within two shots of the lead. And she does. Congratulations from her caddy. Trish Johnson played a magnificent pitch to here. Downhill left to right her to save par. He started with a couple of them. Very slow and deliberate. Oh, it's moved off quickly. So a bogey goes down against hole number three for Johnson. Still plenty of holes left. Ibn Tunning putting for birdie. This will take her to minus three. And, and does. Ties Marine Monet at the top of affairs in this last round and nearly stages the Dane and the Frenchwoman. Got a little two shot break between Gina Scott and Trish Johnson, but it's very close, it's very breezy, it's cool. Whose nerves gonna hold out? We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. Plenty of tourists here watching the golf and doing a, a spot of fishing. That's a, a very big sport in this part of Ireland. Fifth hole for even Tinning. She's trying to win her first event. It's always so difficult. But you can't play any better than that. Almost a hole in one for the Dane. And a certain birdie. And that would move her to four under on her own. And I'm trying to remain cool and calm. Stephanie Arico, not quite. But her good form continues. And in line for a big check if she doesn't win. She hasn't had too many of those lately. 
Gina Scott. This is for a par putt at the ninth. She's just bogeyed eight. And let another one slip here at the end of the front nine. So she goes back to one over. She's ripping up our notes at the moment. Got to find a way to stop the bleeding. Maria Baden. Birdie putt at 10. Oh, came up a little bit shy. Had to come up a tier. But certainly no disgrace. She's one under tied with Trish Johnson. This season, the girls have someone other than their friends and family keeping a close eye on their progress as the tour's resident psychologist, Vicky Aitken, attempts to help them with everyone's Achilles healing golf, the mind. Mm -hmm. While Tracy Guy's healing hands help soothe away the aches and pains of life on tour, we chat to the girls from Down Under, helping the players avoid feeling under par so they can shoot under par. I've been employed by the tour to look after the girls, uh, to make sure that they're ready to go if they have any injuries at all, that I'm there to help with their rehab, to get them back on course, basically. My role is basically to be out here on tour offering my services to the players. Uh, that involves me being here as early as possible during a play week. Um, so I'm here on practice days because that tends to be when the girls want to come and have a chat. Usually they're pretty self-perceptive at the professional level. Um, and by the, when they decide that they want to come and see me, that's half the battle. They already know that they want to either improve their game or there's a weakness in their game that they want to improve again. Tracy, um, the physio on tour, I mean, ex-cardio of mine, um, but she's um, very good at the sports injury side of, of things, and I think it's great that uh, she's come over uh, to treat the girls on tour. It's, it's something that we do need, we do get a lot of injuries, and unfortunately there's no, no one to treat them. So it's a great asset to the tour. And uh, also Vicky, um, has come on the psychology side of it. Uh, I think it's good for the youngsters to learn how, how the game should be played. Sports psychology is something that, that takes a while. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not a magic cure. You need to put a lot of time and effort in over a period of time before you can start seeing some results in terms of performance, motivation, enjoyment, etc. With Vicky's side of things, she was out uh, for the season last year and, and she's had some, some really good um, results from, from the players and the fact that she's here throughout the season and is working with them through the season is, is really positive. Uh, that's what I'm hoping to do so she's looking after the, the mental aspect and, and my job is to, to keep them on top of things physically. One of the things I'm known for on tour is putting my um, signs up behind the toilet doors. So I've decided to put some, a quote of the week behind the door as well. When you can get them back out there on, on track it's, uh, it really makes you feel good by, that you've helped them. My dream is to help golfers achieve their dreams and the Ladies European Tour is a very friendly place and it's definitely, definitely where I want to be for, for the moment. Pars at 6 and 7 for Tinning. She reaches the par 3 eighth, 153 yards. Pretty good shot. It's changed days now, Diane, from when you first came out on tour now. Physiotherapist, psychotherapist. Yeah, it's good to have those girls on tour because uh, week in, week out, there's always some kind of injury. Uh, Dibs, uh, Corinne Dibner last week, she had to withdraw with a slip disc, so it was good to have Tracy Guy around. And also with uh, Vicky out on tour, I'm sure a few of the girls are uh, seeing her as well, so um, it can only be good. Monet just creeping off the green up against that fringe and that's an ugly one trying to keep it down under the breeze would be an easy well bellied wedge perhaps from there or some sort of convoluted putt Suzanne Patterson on the 11th par 5 this is a short par 5 and uh, she'll be able to reach the screen quite easily well she's got a wood but it's probably only a 7 wood Water in front. Oh, she won't be happy with that. It's quite a big target, as you can see. The green's 40 yards long. But then, one under. She's played 11. This is the 12th over the water. This hole was playing very tough all week. The wind did switch around on the final day, so you could hit drive off the tee. 
but in the early stages it was a long way in. Great shot there from her. Perhaps a birdie coming up for the Swede. Trish Johnson back at eight, the par three. Pin cut on the right hand side. Very close to where she just chipped that. And she may be able to save par. Suzanne's third shot on the par five. As you can hear, it's starting to rain now. Conditions have changed a little bit from the start of the day. Girls have got the woolly hats and the waterproofs on now. And Moni up against the fringe. Has she got the putter? It's just a I'm not sure if it's the right choice. It could snag on the way through. Could easily come up 10 feet short here. It was the opposite one. Went off in my hands, Gov, and it's a good 20 feet away. Struggling. Maria Baden. For birdie on the 12th, this would be a great birdie because, as I say, this is a tough hole, one of the tougher holes on the golf course. Yeah. Just found it was its way in the side door, very much the side door. The Scandinavians are very strong, aren't they? They seem to be coming through the woodwork, both on the men's tour and the ladies' tour. Here's another, even tinning. Birdie putter eight. And it's not to be. The marker being reached for as the rain continues to fall. A lovely soft day, they would say. This is in Ireland. It's all right if you're not playing. Short birdie putt for Suzanne Patterson. That takes her to one under par for the tournament. Monet for her par on the eighth. Across the slope, turning. Mm, not quite, just catches the left edge. So another bogey. And she's hanging in there. Seems to have a very good attitude. And on a blustery day as this, you've got to take your medicine sometimes. Trish also putting for par on eight. The pole proved quite difficult. It was you can't really see the bottom of the flag and there's a bunker lurking on the right side of the green. So mistakes are plenty, so even Tinning from Denmark now has a two-shot lead over Maria Boden from Sweden. It's very tight, but it's extremely wet. Hello again and welcome back to round three, the final round of the Ladies 2002 Irish Open. Since joining the Evian Tour in 1997 at the age of 20, Elizabeth Stirl has made many friends and headlines with a vibrant fashion sense. Only a win is missing from the portfolio of the affable daughter of a German farmer who was always destined to play on grass and clay. Well, I started with tennis and then uh, picked up golf, but really golf was never planned to be my profession. Um, I just sort of slipped in there. Uh, about five years ago with 20, 19, I was 19 at the time, so I decided I played the um, British Open as an amateur, made the cut there. And I thought that is great, I, I would really like to do that and set my goals for three years. So, you know, I don't want to study and I don't lose out anything if I just commit to three years doing that. And I think it's great experience for life and uh, I stuck to it and it worked out very well so far. And i uh, got a great time and enjoy it very much. Liesl is rapidly gaining a reputation as a garishly dressed bridesmaid. Joint leader overnight, an impotent final round in Tenerife last week, leaving a tied third, proved frustrating once more. Well, I, I don't feel it. I don't set my pressure really on myself, but people keep asking me, and I said, well, if I would know when I win it, I would tell you, you know, but you, sometimes you just have to be patient and keep your time, and I just say, you know, look at all the other great players, Raquel and David Duval, they took their time, and I just see it as a way of experience, but obviously I've been close many times, uh, and I haven't had the feeling it was really my day, and I just wait for the day to come 
been my day, you know. It doesn't matter which tournament I win, really. I mean, preferably you want to win a major, British Open or Avian, but, um, you know, any win is uh, really special. I mean, I've done it. I've won some other tournaments, but obviously not on tour. Solheim Cup is definitely my big game for this year. I think it's, I mean, I got so excited uh, seeing the last Solheim Cup and I thought I just want to be part there, you know. I think it's a great thing to represent Europe and um, that's, that's definitely my biggest goal and uh, hopefully one or two true wins. Her rock on tour is Graham. As caddy, coach and boyfriend, he has been instrumental in helping her find her feet. But like all relationships, it hasn't always been perfect. Uh, in the past we had some uh, difficulties and I didn't want to have him caddying anymore for me. Because first of all, he's my boyfriend and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very hard to keep a relationship. And then secondly, he's my coach, which is always good to have if you just have the odd uh, little thing in your swing, you can fix it straight away and then obviously as most mental support as well and he's a fantastic caddy you know it was a bit lonely first um, on, year on tour but I think I'm a quite happy character and I make friends quite easily and uh, sort of the first year just testing around what he like and then the second year was just off and uh, great now uh, since we've uh, joined with World Sports Group we've been in the hands of very good people and also the standard of the play has been incredibly improved you know and also this all this young for girls coming out here it's, it's just great you know the whole the whole uh, standard of the tour has changed so what of the groundbreaking attire golf is supposed to be a state and traditional sport isn't it i always like to have uh, funky clothes but uh, really in australia they, they put so much on attention onto my clothes which i never noticed and i thought well, why not put it as my trademark, you know, I like to wear it anyway, and uh, I think it should brighten the whole thing up a bit, because, uh, you know, golf clothes is, in my opinion, not that flashy than it could be, you know, uh, so I just try to brighten the golf course up a bit. Obviously, there's so many pretty girls out here, and uh, why not dress flashy, flashy, you know, I mean, in tennis, you saw all the change uh, as well, and you should really get away from sleeveless vests and uh, sort of check trousers, I think, and just make it more spectacular and more sexy as well. Well, Marie Monet, out in one over par, two under. It's just double bogey the tenth hole. This is a second to 11. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is in the water. She'll go on and take a double bogey seven as well. So back-to-back -back doubles, nightmare for the French woman. Back to plus two. Even tinning in the rain. It's for par, and it's a bogey. The tricky 11th, back to minus three. Still in the lead. Just getting a bit uncomfortable. Trish Johnson battling away. It's on the 13th now in the birdie putt. And back to level par. Superb birdie. And she's seen a couple of mistakes on the leaderboards. She is in the hunt. As is Baden. That's a par putt at 15. Remains one under the card. And anything under par at the end of the day might be in the shake-up. Corinne Dibner, par putt at 15. Level for the tournament, but she does go on to bogey the 16th. So as things stand, just a one slender shot lead for even Tinning over Suzanne Pettersen. And then Baudem, one under par. And here she is. Oh. Good luck for Maria there. all good experience. A lot of these girls are very young now, the Ladies European Tour, the Evian Tour, festooned with youngsters, dying. Trish Johnson playing a fourth shot on the 15th. Struggling a little bit on this hole. You have a water hazard just right of the green. I'm playing very long today. Suzanne Peterson. Second to the 17th. This is 472 yard par five. She just birdied 15, part 16. And that's sensational. The wind switched round on this hole. We played it into the breeze every the first two days, and today it's playing much shorter. It's a very short par five and bringing a lot of eagles and birdies. And she's got that for an eagle. Even tilling her leader, a little sloppy from the edge of the green. 
deep hole. Trying to hang on, it's a difficult discipline. Maria Baudin, it's her second shot into the final hole. She has a father, Hans, cutting for her this week. And mum, Agneta, somewhere out in the crowd watching too. I should be a little bit disappointed with that, yes, standing with a hand on a hip, not very pleased at all. Even turning par putt at 15, running out of holes. Would love to hold this. Oh, and that was a bit of a short backswing and a prod forward. Never really threatened. So bogey for the Dane. This is a big putt for Suzanne Pettersson. Eagle attempt here. That expensive. could be very costly. Very yes. expensive. Well, it's, it's not getting easy to putt now. The breeze has died slightly, but the, the rain is continuing to fall. And when the rain goes away, back comes the wind. Maria Baden for her birdie. She see, she's hit that pretty hard. It's difficult to see, but there's a bit of an elephant's graveyard in the screen. Quite difficult to get the ball up to the hole. A big undulation on the left side. Trish Johnson. Well, she was after that before she, more or less before she hit it. She knew it was missing. And that's an ugly double bogey. So back to plus two. Sure, Maria's had a quick glance at the, the scoreboard and realizes this is quite an important putt for her. So this is for her par on the 18th hole. Yeah. Straight in the middle. Well, she finished fourth in the Q school to get out and tour, and that's her best finish ever. Very fine effort from the young Swede. With a, a couple of holes left for even tinning, she now is one behind Suzanne Pettersson who is three under with one hole to play. Remember, she just missed that little eagle putt. It's very close. Who's going to prevail? Welcome back. Every shot at this stage, crucial and costly. Suzanne Pettersson ripping it, she hopes, down the fairway at the last. Leaning a little bit to the right. Generally means it's going right. And uh, it's looking like she's hit the fourth fair... No, she's in the rough between the 18th and the fourth fairway. She actually got a break there. She got through the tree. She may have a clear shot. One hole further back, par five, even tinning. Good looking golf swing. Great looking shot. That is brilliant. Surely she'll knock that in for her eagle. She won't know how close that is. The green's slightly raised up. And everyone knows how they stand. Scoreboards around the golf course tell Trish Johnson that she probably can't win, but it's a massive tee shot down at 17. Yeah, she only has a mid-iron in here, and uh, 17 is 472 yards long, so, uh, but it is playing down breeze, so uh, it is in their favour. And she's going to be happy with that. As Robert said, she won't be able to see where it finishes, but uh, people clapping at the green, so she knows it's pretty close. Well, a good life for Suzanne Pettersson on 18. Second shot in. It's a three-quarter swing with an eight iron. And that's pretty good, but you can see how undulating the last green is. It's all over the place very difficult to run your ball up to the hole, get it on the right ridge. So not an easy two putt for the Norwegian. Just got to put here a little bit left to right. That's the eagle. Now she read it the way I did, which was wrong. Pity. 
two really nice strokes, but a four goes down. That's her score for this penultimate hole. Even tinning for an eagle. What a putt this will be to hole. Not far, only about four feet. Bit of an anxious attempt there. She knew what was at stake. Well, I'm sure she's very aware of what's at stake. But that would have put her in. Well, it would have put her in the lead. Yeah, it would have done. And she just looked a little bit nervy on the greens today for me. The tee to green play has been superb. That is a very good putt from down there. I actually, I was in a similar position to Corinne and uh, managed to three putt that one. So getting into the hole was quite difficult. It's but, very uphill. But did you smile after you three putted? I grimacedly, grimacingly smiled. <laughs> Surely a tap in. Oh, uh, Monet holds out on 17. It's a birdie, but she's back to plus three. It's not been the best third round for her. Straight uphill. Get up. Get up. And a difficult place to leave herself. Nervous. Knows she's got a great chance to win. Knows she must two putt on this next three or four feet or so. Because 190 yards from the tee, but you've got to make sure you don't run out of fairway on the other side. So she's trying to hit that little patch of fairway just over the bunkers. Now, if it's in there, that's a hopeless spot. She might just be out of it. Just depends. She needs a lucky break with a liar. 218. I think that was Norwegian for something. Definitely Norwegian for something. Probably not too savoury. So, bogey. Played the hole well, just left herself an awkward one. How costly that might prove to be. She's now got to sit and wait, watch the last group come in. Trish with three wood. Really just trying to hit this fairway. The conditions now really are not very pleasant. She said it perfectly down the middle. Corinne Dibner hoping to finish out. An 18 with a par. Oh, can you believe it? Oh, a couple of three putts. That always leaves a horrible taste in your mouth. It really does. Petterson can only stew now and wait and think of what might have been. We'll go back down to the, to the rough, not the fairway. And even tinning. found the bunker on the right edge of the green. Well, she's got a very difficult bunker shot from there. It's a good 40 yards, 50 yards to the pin. Quite a lot of power there though, Diane, to dig that out of that heavy, wet grass. She's a very, very strong player. Like Suzanne, they're both long hitters and strong girls. They do a lot of fitness training during the, the winter months or during the off season. 388 yards, number 18. Trish Johnson's covering that in two strokes. And that's a terrific second. At least she's coming straight up the ridge from there. If it holds on, and just does. Looks like she's got a good lie, which is a, a start. But uh, this is a, this is one of the most difficult shots in golf. Also, she had the, the ridge and the green to contend with. So from there, not, not such a bad attempt. Probably 12, 14 feet left for a par. Trish Johnson then for her birdie at 18. Would like to have no more shots to play after this one. And that was a left to right up the slope and it very, very much straightened out. Looking a little bit puzzled. I think that's been the, the story of the week really. The, green, the greens have been very difficult to read. I found that so. 
tinning for a par on 18. Just to win. And again, a bit of a prod up towards the hole. Very unconvincing with the flat stick the last few holes. Very much, I'm sure, Diane, thinking, don't race this four feet by. I think that was just a, you know, just a little bit of a lag to the, the whole side. Because, as you can see, a few girls have missed from short range there, so it's not uh, such an easy putt from two feet on the final hole. One A for her par on the 18th, and she holds it. Well, it's really two holes that were her undoing. 10 double bogey, 11 double bogey. Her time will come. Tinning, bogey putt on 18. And that's a tie. So she ties Suzanne Peterson. And what might have been for both girls? Both bogeying the last hole. And both having very short eagle putts on 17. Chris Johnson taps in. A good week for her. It won't be another victory. Victory number 18 will have to wait Ladies a little while. Ladies uh, there is now going to be a playoff um, subject to cards being signed. Uh, the playoff will be 18th hole continuously. So even Tinning and Suzanne Peterson, it's between those two now. Everyone else has got to look where they finished and count up and see how much money they've made. Maria Baden, the only other person to be under par for the week, will go to the very first extra hole. Even Tinning's up first. Crucial. Put her opponent under pressure. Can she find the fairway? Three wood for Ibn. So if they, for instance, play this hole and they halve in fours or fives, they'll play down the 18th again. They'll just keep on playing the 18th until someone comes out as the victor. One on the fairway, one to go. Pettersson's response with the driver. That's a big swing. She lost it right the first time round. And again has wailed it out to the right hand side. That's some 15 yards short of where she was in real time. It could be a tree in a way. Could be a few trees in a way, actually, down the east side of the, the 18th fairway. Even turning. Got a real opportunity here to put some pressure on. She can just find the green. And she has. Let's put her in a good position. It's uh, down to Suzanne now to fi find her way through those trees. Thread a shot through onto the green. She's trying to hit a cut shot. Three-quarter backswing, punch it, keep the club face open. Oh, and she's played a belter. That is a fantastic shot from there in the playoff. Under pressure, her opponent's on the green, and she managed to match her. So it's all down to the putting, as as we've seen, this 18th green is treacherous. Who's your money on, Diane? My money would be on Suzanne. She won her first tournament in a playoff against uh, Becky Morgan on the third hole, so she has some success in playoffs. Having said that, she lost the Australian Open this year in another one of those dreadful shootouts. And pace not terrible, but it's offline a little bit four feet down the hill. I'm sure she's thinking, just make a par and start again. Ibn, now for birdie. Ibn has never won, so that's why I put my money on Suzanne, Robert, was her experience. That's a fair shout. Tinning trying to ease it up towards the hole. A better attempt this time. It's no three, but it's a certain four. And it's over to you, Suzanne. This to tie. And force it one more hole, perhaps. Straight putt. Just hit a little bit too firmly. Well, another playoff bites the dust for Pettersson. So even Tinning makes history. Her first tournament on the Evian Tour, the first Danish lady ever to win on the European Tour. With that little three, four inch putt, great applause from the Irish crowd. And it's been a sensational week for the Dane. And 
it's always very difficult when you're trying to win your first event and then she has to go into a playoff, but she did prevail. And that's how things finished. Corinne Dibner in a big tie at fourth with Johnson, Taylor and Marina Aruti. But it's all cheers for the Dane. It's been a superb week for Denmark. I am absolutely thrilled. This is uh, the biggest thing for me in golf. I've uh, never won a tournament before, and this is my first time. I was so I can't believe it myself. The second time I lose a playoff, so uh, maybe next time. But I, I played a good golf, the back nine, and uh, I can't complain. I mean, 18th is a difficult green, a very difficult pin position, and unfortunately I three put it two times, and it happens. So those are the Solheim Cup standings. Suzanne Pedersen hoisted her way into second spot and in the last automatic qualifying spot, Eben Tinning of Denmark, the 2002 Irish Ladies Champion. But for this week, it's goodbye from Diane and myself. We'll see you next week.